Let's talk about interruptions that throw you off your weekly plan. Now, there's always gonna be things that pop up without warning. Now, it's usually last minute emergencies that pull you off your number one priority, but they're still urgent enough to have to get done. So I call this type of unknown work UUW, which stands for unplanned, unwanted work. The unexpected tasks and emergencies, just last minute changes that will happen during your week. This stuff is gonna happen. Now, you know what I'm talking about. The, oh, by the way, that somehow finds its way onto your plate and suddenly, poof, your neatly planned week is in ruins. Now, the best way to prevent this is by using flex time. Flex time is a concept in productivity that refers to blocks of time that are deliberately left unscheduled in your calendar. Now, I like to think about it as a safety nut under the tightrope of your week. Now, flex time is a crucial tool to handle those kinds of UUWs. And we spend a lot of time in our book, The Winning the Week Method, talking about using flex time. You know, I think of flex time as a practical application of the stoic adage, expect the unexpected. Now, I don't know what kind of unexpected work I'm gonna encounter this week, and I don't know how much time I'll need to deal with it, but here's the thing. I know it's gonna be greater than zero minutes, right? So I'm gonna allocate a portion of my time to expect that unexpected work. Now, flex time is crucial to effective time management for a couple reasons. Number one, it accommodates for the unpredictability of life. I mean, no matter how well you plan, these unexpected things are gonna come up and flex time allows you to address these surprises without completely disrupting your plan. Second, it reduces stress and anxiety. Now, by having some unscheduled time, you create a buffer, some flexibility where you can absorb those tasks that take longer than expected or new tasks that appear during the week. Third, it improves your work-life balance because that unused flex time can actually be used for self-care, and relaxation, or even to handle personal tasks, generally contributing to a healthier work-life balance. So how much flex time should you build into your week and where do you put that flex time? Okay, now I'm gonna be honest. The amount of flex time that you put in your week can vary greatly depending on your personal productivity habits, your workflow, and how unpredictable your life tends to be. So it's gonna be really personal and you're gonna to have to experiment to find the right application for you. But what I can give you is some good general guidelines. First, let's talk about the amount of flex time. A good starting point would be to allocate around 12 to 15% of your work week as flex time. So if you're working a 40 hour work week, that's about four to five hours of flex time. A good general rule of thumb is just one hour per working day. Now I'm gonna be honest, that's probably not gonna cover all of your UW, but considering that you're probably allocating zero hours to flex time right now, it's gonna feel like a huge improvement. All right, number two, let's talk about the placement of the flex time. That can also vary based on your personal preferences and the nature of your work. So for example, some people find it helpful to have a block of flex time every single day. Other people prefer to set aside one whole day as a flex day in their week. But here's a couple advanced tips from seeing this implemented by literally thousands of people. First, I want you to start noticing that your UUWs tend to show up around the same time throughout the week. Here's why. Since most people don't pre-plan their week like you do, they spend most of their Monday and Tuesday just trying to catch up on emails and set a plan for their week. So that means most of the UUWs from them that are gonna hit your desk are gonna happen around Wednesday. So later in the day and later in the week. Now, second, your best energy is early in the week and earlier in the day. So a good rule of thumb is to stack your flex time later in the day and later in the week because that's when those UUWs are gonna show up and it shaves your best energy to do your deep work, your most important work. Now, personally, I put my flex time blocks on Tuesday afternoon, Thursday afternoon, and scattered throughout the day on Friday. Just a matter of personal preference. Now, a key benefit of flex time is protecting those peak hours. Let me give you an example of that in action. My client, Randy, is constantly getting team members trying to put things on his plate during his deep work blocks. But since he always has time at the end of every day for UUWs, he just says, no problem, I can help you with that. I've got time set aside to deal with emergencies at 4 p.m., so I'll help you look into this later today. So he's not saying no, he's just saying not now. Okay, let's talk about adapting and adjusting. It's really important to review and adjust your flex time based on how well it's working. If you find yourself constantly running out of flex time, you need more flex time, or you're underestimating the size of your tasks. And if you're not using flex time early in the week, but then you need it later in the week, that's a sign you need to push your flex time till later in the week. All right, final thoughts. Remember, you're not gonna have enough flex time. If you opened your whole week to deal with other people's emergencies, you would spend 
all of your time helping other people with their work and wouldn't they love that? So my aim with flex time isn't to be the quick fix solution for everyone else's emergencies. I'm trying to thread the needle of being available for real emergencies while not blowing up my schedule. So if you find that people are abusing your availability, you're gonna to need to start cutting down their access to you or delaying your response time to them. By delaying that help, what you're opening up is a space for them to find a solution for themselves. And that reduces the number of emergencies they bring to you in the future. It also encourages people to be more self-reliant. So remember, other people's poor planning does not constitute your emergency. You need to get clear with yourself that your flex time is set aside for genuine real emergencies, not to compensate for the poor time management or inadequate planning of other people. Now, if you wanna see how this is done in real life and have us take you through it, join us in Lifehack Tribe. We do guided weekly pre-plannings every Friday where we put flex time into our calendars together.